The Young Turks seem to be becoming more and more unhinged every single day. We have this uh, video here about um, Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, this is uh, about a month old, but it's kind of good that we waited to, to cover this because they say some things in here that it's like, okay, that didn't come true. That they, they predicted, they have some predictions. Hello and welcome to my channel. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure that you're still subscribed because YouTube does unsubscribe people every single day. Oh, by the way, stick around to the end because I have a I was Kyle Rittenhouse story. I um, I was put into a situation where I experienced things similar to what Kyle Rittenhouse went through. And I want to share that story with you at the end of the video. So stick around for that. I think you'll enjoy it. And let's go ahead and dive into this video. Kyle Rittenhouse has been found not guilty in the shooting and killing of two men and the attempted killing of a third uh, by a Wisconsin jury after four days and over 25 hours of deliberations. Uh, the panel also cleared him of attempted intentional homicide for severely wounding Gage Grosskreutz, a 27-year-old paramedic from suburban Milwaukee who was there not, that night volunteering his medical services. Uh, Rittenhouse was also acquitted on two counts of recklessly endangering safety. I mean, they, they say there that he's a paramedic, but he wasn't holding an assault rifle, so he doesn't seem like an authentic medic in this context. He was holding a pistol. I mean, maybe that makes him a paramedic since he wasn't holding an assault rifle. Right, John? And may I just say here, like, John, you're doing a great job. You look like you've been out drinking and smoking all night before you filmed this. What the heck is going on here? Do the Young Turks not have the budget for makeup? <laughs> I don't understand how he looks so bad. Does he not know he's going to go on an international broadcast for this? In any event, we want to show you a little bit from the announcement. Okay, we're not going to go into this. Uh, this is just the reading of Kyle Rittenhouse's um, verdict. So bearing in mind that uh, previously they had gotten some sort of length technicality that got rid of the uh, weapons charge, uh, from the perspective of our judicial system, uh, he did nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong. Don't get into his motives, his actions were perfect, he shouldn't have made any different choices. Everything he did is fine, and that is unfortunately, I think, the lesson that some individuals are going to take away from this. That's not true. Um, from the point of view of our judicial system, he just wasn't found guilty of these particular crimes. If you had had an interest in grabbing a gun and going somewhere and ending up in some sort of situation, well, you can now be uh, assured on two things. You already knew that you'd be able to raise millions of dollars to crowdsource your defense. You'd become a celebrity on the right. And now you've been told by the state that it's probably totally fine legally, too. So, um... Yes, self-defense is totally fine. It always has been in this country. That's why we have these laws. John, you're such an idiot. You don't know obvious laws. You're allowed to defend yourself if somebody is attacking you. It's that simple. So why don't you go ahead and be the change and actually read the law. I know we, we might disagree about some of the specifics of this, but the uh, set, the incentives that this is providing for more potential vigilantes, and Fox News is doing everything they can every day to encourage more people to do this, is that you do not have to fear legal consequences. Yeah. So uh I, I love this. They, they talk about how there's, there's no legal ramification for what you did. And it, this is the, the same tired argument that they, they are, keep uh, dragging out every single time Kyle Rittenhouse comes up is, oh, you can just get away with anything. If you're, if you're white, if you're a right, a right winger, you can get away with anything in this country. But if you're left wing, oh, you, you, they throw the book at you. They throw the book at you. It's like, did you realize that this was a trial that they went through and like analyzed what had happened? It wasn't like, oh, oh he did it. It's fine. It's, it's fine. He's white. Okay, look, let him go. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And that's what they're doing with these with these uh, Antifa and BLM members. They're just letting them go. Oh, I don't want to prosecute you. That's fine. Let him go. Uh, look, there are at least two different issues here, and we'll have to talk through both of them at a minimum. I think there's a bunch of other peripheral issues like the world's worst mom. Uh, so I want to get back to that later. Uh, but uh, the two issues are, uh, did the jury uh, rule correctly? Uh, and should he have been convicted? Should he have been acquitted in the case as a matter of law? Uh, and Morgan, I'm curious about your thoughts on that in a second as well. Uh, and then the second issue is, is what he did okay? Okay, now, if uh, I don't think that it's quite sending the message that, that John said in, from a legal perspective. Uh, I don't, when if someone is uh, not proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, that doesn't mean that the state is saying what they did was okay. So OJ Simpson was also acquitted because uh, they could not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he did it. Uh, it doesn't mean the state of California thought that it was great what OJ Simpson might have done, okay? Now, I think he did it, uh, and, and in the case of the House, just because he gets acqu uh, acquitted does not mean the state thinks it was hunky-dory. They just couldn't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, it's going to lead to the second issue in a second. What is this? The great brown buffalo is making reasonable arguments? How is this possible? How, what is happening in the world that the shank is actually making sense all of a sudden? This is, I, 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 don't, I don't believe what I'm hearing here. This, this can't be true. But why did they um, uh, rule the way that they did? Well, we told you all along it was a tough case. 
uh, as we were covering it because it was the simplest case I've ever seen of self-defense in my entire life. Um, look, they, there was, first of all, the legal standard is really important, guys. And, and we didn't get this completely right throughout, and I want to clarify it here. Most states say that when you go to a self-defense argument, as Rittenhouse did, the burden of proof then shifts, and uh, you've got to prove an affirmative case of self-defense. That is not the case in Wisconsin, which greatly helps Rittenhouse and makes this ruling even more understandable from a legal perspective. Uh, in Wisconsin, you still have to disprove self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt, which makes it much harder. Now, in the case of, of the first uh, person that he shot, uh, it was Rosenbaum who had thrown a plastic bag at him, but someone had shot nearby. He heard the gun sound, then he apparently thought something was being thrown at him, he kills uh, the first guy. The second guy hit him with a skateboard. Now, I wouldn't kill anyone if they hit me with a skateboard. And you would die, Chank. You realize that, that you can beat somebody to death with a skateboard. It's possible. I'm not saying that it's likely, but it's possible. Skateboards do have metal on them. They do have plastic on them, and they have wood on them. They're not these like flimsy little things that you can just like, oh, he smacked me with it, and the skateboard broke. Ah, ha, ha, stupid skateboard. No, I mean, skateboards take a lot of punishment before they're broken before they'll break. They're plywood, they're, they're made that way on purpose so that they can withstand a lot of punishment. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to use them to jump off of buildings and stuff like the kids do these days. You would definitely kill somebody if they were trying to beat you with a skateboard chunk if you were given the, the opportunity. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that because you would just like try to defend yourself by putting your hand up and you'd fall over on them and then crush them and they would die. But I know the right wing, they're very fragile, very weak. And so they think, if you look at me kind of wrong, I'm afraid for my life and I'll murder you. But in the case of the law and the, and the jury here, I don't think the jury is the issue. I don't think that, that this was an atrocious ruling. Uh, I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, because they're put in a situation where one guy, you know, they have to say beyond a reasonable doubt that he did not act in self-defense. I think the, the real issue is as a matter of precedent in the, in the country, do we want people walking around with weapons, provoking people, and then as soon as they're threatened in any way, start to kill people? Because if this is- That's not what happened. We have all seen the videos. I hope, if you haven't seen the videos of this yet, you can find them, believe me. You see Rosenbaum provoking Rittenhouse repeatedly, telling him, shoot me, come on, shoot me. What the hell? I mean, who was provoking who in that situation? And what did Kyle do? He didn't shoot him, not right away anyway. He waited until he was attacked by this man, physically attacked by him, and then he shot him the standard we're going to have massive vigilante violence in this country so but before i move on to that topic morgan what do you think about the legal rule yeah i mean i think you're right in the sense that we have now put laws on the books all over this country that do green light exactly what you're saying vigilante justice we have individuals that are yeah we put those laws on the books now i mean we didn't do that until like five years ago right those have not been on the books for like hundreds of years and who the hell is this woman and why the hell is she not in the kitchen instead of running for senator like she's as the jury executioner all in one based on some kind of feeling that they're having. And so that's not exactly the jury's fault. That's a that's a problem of our legal system. And these types of inconsistencies, one, are what continue to breed extreme distrust of our justice system. But then also, yeah, I think this is a scary moment where we continue to unleash people who believe that they can take matters into their own hands based on their individual impression of any given perceived threat of danger. That's really, really scary. Yeah. The whole thing, look, I, I care about the implications of this far more than the individual details of the particular case, but there's just, this leaves us with a thousand interesting questions. So if, like if it's just self-defense in the first case, so someone shoots nearby, so he gets to kill someone nearby, so you can just carry a gun and anytime you hear a loud noise, you get to shoot someone? Yep, that's how it works, John. You figured it out. Wow, it's amazing. You, you figured it out. Whoa, so, wow, whoa, this guy is just freaking rocket scientist here. Yep, anytime you hear a loud noise and you have a gun, you're allowed to kill somebody. That's how it works, John. Never mind the fact that Joseph, Ros Joseph Rosenbaum was actually physically attacking Kyle Rittenhouse. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you about that. I mean, you want to obfuscate and say, oh, well, he hit her gunshot and that scared him. So he turned around and thought that Rosenbaum was shooting at him. So he shot Rosenbaum instead. Obviously, facts are not important to the young Turks, obviously. Like, th that's, that's insane. You should have to prove that there was a good re And then, after he shoots the first person, anyone else nearby with a gun would have presumably heard that shot, so they get to shoot someone that's standing near them, too. This is insane. And one of the most frustrating things- Yes, it is insane, John. You are insane. You're being insane right now. For me, about the right-wing responses, as many of them will immediately say, well, it's, it's self-defense. It's law. 
you are not allowed to express any issue with the way self-defense is def defined generally in this individual state, the way that it's adjudicated, who generally gets to use that defense. Um, and we're just supposed to take it as given. We're supposed to just accept that the law as written is obviously right. It's not designed, nor in effect does it have particular outcomes. And we're being told this, I tweeted something to this effect earlier, by people who spent the last half century trying to strip away women's reproductive rights. Okay, so there was a, a jury trial about this, John, to interpret the law in, for this particular case. You know, he wants to talk about people stripping, trying to strip away the rights of women. Okay, they're trying to strip away those, those rights of women. Actually, I think they're trying to give rights to the unborn babies, to the fetuses. That's what I see. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm pro or against abortion. I'm not sticking my toe into that dumpster fire. But um, what it seems to me is that they're just trying to give rights to the children. They think that, that abortion is killing a child, killing a baby. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's the impression that I get. We've never just complied with the law and thought, well, if it's the law, then we can never question it whatsoever. We can never uh, wonder if it should be the way it is. And he Hey, well, John, why don't you go ahead and question the law? Why don't you go ahead and question the self-defense laws? You are doing this. You're protesting the self-defense laws right now, saying they, they it shouldn't exist, and you have every right to do that. But, you know, if somebody were attacking you, what are you going to do, John? You're just going to take it? I'm going to let him beat me. It's fine. I'm going to let him beat me to death. What if you had a gun, and that person took that gun away from you and beat you to unconsciousness, and then you lost that gun. What's that person going to do with that gun? You're going to go find your family and kill them? Find somebody who's innocent, completely innocent, and just shoot them. Man, these people don't think of anything. I don't understand how they actually don't fall down all the time. Here, it's just the law. Everyone shut up. And let's only focus on the last 30 seconds. So anything before 30 seconds before he started killing people, you can't question. So you can't show him talking on video about how he'd like to kill someone. That happened days before. And they did look at other things. They did look at other things that happened during the riots. They look at what he was doing during the day that led up to the riots. They didn't just look at those few seconds in and around the, the shootings. One, you can't wonder why he would bring a gun to this sort of situation. Why did he have to be there in the first place? What media had he has every right to bring a gun to that situation? You've every right to walk down the street with a gun. This happened to me shortly after I moved to the area I live in now. I walked into a bookstore and there's a dude sitting there in the cafe with a gun strapped to his hip. And I was like, what's that? He's like, yeah, it's just my pistol. Sometimes the police harass me about it. They know they're not supposed to. I mean. It's the law, so I'm not hurting anybody. Yeah, so you're allowed to carry a gun around, John. He'd been consuming that was encouraging these sorts of vigilante things. You should only pay attention to the three or four seconds before the shot, and that's it. Well, I'm sorry. I can't be so uh, idiotic as that. I have to wonder. <laughs> oh, you know, you have to be like, oh, 20 times more idiotic than that, John. <laughs> what went into it, what decisions were made, and whether it's the law in Wisconsin that you should consider that or not, I think we should. And I would say, by the way, they generally don't want you to think about any of this stuff, and yet they've all settled on this bizarre, not even legal argument, because they'll never be explicit about it, that you should not be bothered by the murders because, hey, it turned out uh, one or two of the people he shot had done bad things. All three of the people he shot had done bad things, and that has no bearing on whether or not they deserve to be killed in our legal system. In our, our legal system, so everybody has the right to life unless you get involved in a situation where uh, we employ capital punishment. That's it. So that being said, that doesn't mean that it's okay for him to kill those people, but you might have personal feelings about that, whether or not you think it's okay for him to have killed those people. And that's, uh, you know, you're allowed to think whatever you want to think. I'm not the thought police. Nobody is, although the Young Turks would like to be. Never mind that he didn't know about that. Never mind that even if he did, he doesn't get to just execute bad people when he comes across them on the street. But they think the motivations of the people who died should go into our evaluation of this, but not the motivations of the guy who took a gun he never should have had across state lines and went to this protest. All of that is worthy of uh, at least a discussion and possibly legal reform, I think. So now let me fully agree with John on the societal points at, at, at play here. So first of all, guys, um, think about the, uh, one of the points that John just made. So it's self-defense. If you hear a gunshot, you could just turn around and shoot someone. Well, then under that theory, someone nearby could have shot Rittenhouse. What is happening here? What are they? Oh, these people are insane. I hear a loud noise, therefore I can kill people. What is this? What is this world that they're trying to create? And said, well, I heard a gunshot and he had a gun. So the, Rosenbaum didn't have a gun. He had a, At that point, he didn't even have a plastic bag. He'd already thrown it. Yeah. So he had no weapon at all. And a jury just ruled it's self-defense to shoot that unarmed man and kill him. Okay. Because you heard a gunshot. Well, you, a lot of people heard Rittenhouse's gunshot. Could they have just executed him on the spot? Just And, and the answer is yes. They were trying to, Chank. They were trying to. And none of those people, not a single one of them, went to trial. None of them have been charged with assault on Kyle Rittenhouse. You realize that? That the only person who was charged with anything in this case was Kyle Rittenhouse. And he was the one who didn't do anything wrong. 
yes, according to the ruling we just had, if you hear a gunshot. Now, what if the person you're shooting is a cop? What if you, you heard a cop shooting, but you didn't bother looking, and you just turn around just like Rittenhouse did? You just turn around, boom, execute the cop. Guess what happened with Breonna Taylor? Her boyfriend shot a police officer. Well, how many charges was, was he charged with for that, for that incident? Let me see. He was like, he, he heard his door being broken down. He pulled out his gun. He shot somebody. Oh, yeah, that's right. None. He didn't get charged at all for shooting that police officer. I think he might, maybe might have gotten charged. There were, all those charges were dismissed. So, yeah, Chink, that's, that's the way it works. You heard a gunshot. That's self-defense. Okay, and guys, the skateboard, it's insanity. The one good job that the prosecution did was it was in the closing argument when they said, does anyone else have a right to self-defense? Or is only the person with the weapon allowed self-defense? Everybody has the right to self-defense. Um, nobody was attacking Huber. Huber was attacking Kyle Rittenhouse, and then Kyle Rittenhouse defended himself. Nobody was attacking Gage Grosskreutz, and then Kyle Rittenhouse defended himself. I don't know what to tell you about this. One of them had a gun, so presumably only the person with the biggest gun has a right to self-defense. Yeah, so did that guy have a right to self-defense as Rittenhouse was literally shooting him, right? Then the guy with the skateboard, did he have a right to defend himself from, he heard shots, right? Just like Rittenhouse did. They say, you, you know what, Chink? I've heard shots. All right, so here's a little story about me hearing shots. I was uh, just sitting in my bedroom one day and I heard a gunshot. I was like, what the heck? And I thought, maybe I'll go outside and investigate. And I thought, no, wait, I'm not going to go outside and investigate because I might be the victim of the next bullet. So, um... I waited 45 minutes and I went outside and found out that my neighbor had shot somebody twice. You know what? The thing to do is what I did. You stay away from where the gunshots are coming from. If gunshots, you hear gunshots, you don't go towards them. You go away from them. All right? That's how you defend yourself against gunshots. These idiots are saying, oh, wait, I heard a gunshot. I heard Kyle Rittenhouse shot somebody. I'm going to go attack him. What? You see this guy with a gun over here? He shot somebody. Let's go get him. Um, do you have guns? No. Oh. Then no, I'm not going to go get him because he's going to shoot at least one of us. House can kill someone if he heard shots. Well, Huber heard shots, and he was defending himself with a skateboard. So does he have no rights at all? Does that defending himself with a skateboard <laughs> like that? He was defending himself with a skateboard because he heard gunshots. Oh, mean as a society now, and the gun manufacturers are going to be thrilled with this decision. Mm -hmm. Does that mean as a society now we all have to be super heavily armed? Otherwise, we lose the right to self-defense, and we could be killed at any time. Um, well, that's a good question, actually. Uh, the, so people you'll hear say an armed society is a polite society. I don't really buy that because uh, the wild, wild west used to be, people used to be heavily armed, or at least armed. It was a lot of killings in the wild, wild west. And, you know, people carried weapons with them all throughout middle, medieval Europe, and there was still a lot of crime, violent crime. So an armed society is not necessarily a polite society it's a good thought i mean it kind of makes sense you're like oh well, yeah you don't know if this person's going to kill you because they might have a gun or they everybody does have a gun so we don't know what's going to happen but the thing is is people still try to kill each other this just became an incredibly scary country yeah. if it wasn't already very scary to begin with with trayvon martin george zimmerman and countless other cases morgan well, yeah, and, and just, you know, a lot of the names that are coming to mind for me as we're looking at what are our laws on the books, what are we allowing, what do certain laws open the, the gateway to? I mean, Tamir Rice, Tyron King, Henry Green, people who have been killed in Ohio um, in, in interactions with law enforcement that were that have also been justified to an extent by the laws on the books. And what is the end result of this? It is chaos. We are living through chaos, and that is no way to run a country, And but it is exactly the plan of people who profit off of yeah. that chaos. George Floyd's life mattered. Did it really? You know, we don't want to see people being killed by the police. We don't want to see people being killed, period. I think everybody can forgive Kyle Rittenhouse because he was acting in self-defense, except for these people who think it wasn't self-defense. I don't know why. But George Floyd brought this upon himself. It was the fentanyl that killed him. And if you watch the police camera footage, which I have on my channel, you can find it on my channel. I have the, the freaking footage of what happened with George Floyd from the police camera, body camera. He, um, he begged it be, to be put on the ground. He didn't want to be put in the squad car. Yep. Okay. The, yeah, go ahead, John. Uh, the, the way that I forget who put it this way, but the way I read it was uh, the last person alive is innocent. That's what it is. You better be the last person alive, and then you were. Cage Ghost Quartz is still alive. And he is innocent, apparently. I mean, he didn't get charged with attacking Kyle Rittenhouse. Or the one defending yourself. Everything else is just collateral damage uh, along that path. Well, John, let me agree further with you. So everybody saw Rittenhouse crying on the stand, and everybody wondered, is it real? Is it fake? Et cetera. But there was a lot of people had sympathy for, oh, my God, the poor kid. Well, how about Huber? So he never got to cry on the stand because he was murdered or now killed, officially killed, not murdered. And so 
You never got to see him crying. You never got to see him do anything. He was killed as a young man in the streets because a maniac was running around with an AR-15 shooting. So, Chunk, you're religious, right? You're a Muslim. Why don't you believe that uh, Anthony Huber went up to heaven and got his 74 virgins or whatever it is? Seems to me that then, you know, you should welcome death. He was also in a state of combat, right? That's how that's how you, you, you get those 74 virgins is by going into combat and dying, isn't it? I think it's 76 virgins, but whatever. However many virgins you get. Anything that he perceived to be a threat after he started uh, going in there, in my opinion, with the confrontation of bringing in weapons to a protest in the first place, right? So now that leads us to two other things. The good thing he did bring those weapons to a protest because if he hadn't, he would have been severely beaten by Joseph Rosenbaum. If he had managed to get away from that situation, he might have been shot by Gage Grosskreutz and beaten by Anthony Huber. Um, just let me dispense with this real quick. The mom is the world's worst parent. She drove a 17-year-old with an AR-15 into what she perceived to be a dangerous riot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to go into it in the middle of a dangerous riot, my 17-year-old son? Here, I'll drive you across state lines to do it. Oh, here's an AR-15. Yeah, none of that happened. None of that happened. She drove him across straight state lines, but he, he didn't have an AR-15 and she didn't drive him to the riot. In case a butterfly floats by, you just murder everyone. In case a butterfly floats by, you just murder everybody. Just, just, ah. Damn butterflies. Those damn butterflies. Ah. Okay, I'm sorry. Kill everyone, mm -hmm. okay? She is a despicable parent. Yeah. No sane parent would ever do that. But the right wing in this country is crazed. They're crazed. They can't wait to shoot people, which leads me to the biggest culprits of all, the Rittenhouse fans or supporters. Yes, that includes all of them. All of the, the Alex Jones, the Tim Pools, the Joe Rogans, the millions of crazed Rambo wannabe right wingers in this country who are like Okay, well, I can't speak too much about Alex Jones. I don't really watch him that much, and it doesn't seem like he wants to be Rambo. Joe Rogan, he's a, yeah, he's an avid gunsman. Uh, he's a hunter. He is, he says, left wing on every other issue. He's like, I want everybody to have guns, otherwise I'm left wing on everything. And from what I've heard him talk about, yeah, he seems like he's pretty far left. I mean, he wants legalized all drugs. He wants uh, universal health care. He's for like all the rights for all the different peoples. He wants them all to have all the equal rights. So I don't know how that makes him right wing. Tim Pool, I watch a lot of Tim Pool. Every single day I'm watching Tim Pool, multiple times. And he, yeah, he's not left wing. And he doesn't seem like he wants to be Rambo either. So I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you're just totally wrong there, Chunk. They're like, oh yeah, hey, why don't I just bring weapons? Oh, 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 self-defense, murder, 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 murder. They just want to kill. So they go into the middle of protest with these goddamn weapons, looking to pick a fight, and then the minute Rittenhouse actually shoots these people, they're ecstatic. They love that he killed them. They love that he killed them. That's why they're his fans. What is there to be a fan of? If the shoe's on the other foot, and some guy goes into the middle of a right-wing protest with an AR-15 and he's progressive. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, well, I was, they provoked me. Somebody threw a plastic bag, the other one in a skateboard, so I killed him. I don't become a fan of that guy. Yeah. I don't become a fan of that guy. I say that's insane to go in the middle. But you are a fan. You're a fan of all the things that the Antifa and BLM are doing. And they're killing people. And they're burning down cities and stuff. I don't, I don't understand how you don't see this. But, you know, I'm not a giant brown buffalo. A protest with an AR-15 looking to pick a fight so you can kill people. But the right wing in this country is steeped in violence. They're soaked in blood and they can't wait to kill. So, guys, America, I hate to say it because I love this country. But America has now become a super scary place where people are constantly killing each other and getting away with it. Yeah, and it's a... Uh... So, people are constantly killing each other and getting away with it. Where, where do you see that happening? It does happen. Usually, there's an investigation and it's found to be self-defense. Is by the way, it's convenient for the right uh, because look, just just today, you will be thinking about this and not about the fact that the House packed uh, passed Build Back Better. So the fact that you might save a thousand dollars a month on insulin, they don't want you thinking about that sort of thing because it might lead you to believe that the government can make your life better, that perhaps it owes you something. And generally, you should be terrified. You should be terrified. We're going to tell you all the people you should be scared of, so that you will never ever again think about your economic situation, how the government has failed you, and why, who it's actually serving. They love the focus on all of this stuff. They scare people like Kyle Rittenhouse constantly with their nonsense and then use the murders of people like him to scare you further. Now, we're going to be talking about both because we have an obligation to. We believe that there is some sort of ethical obligation when you're involved in journalism, um, but they don't. Th what? What did you just say? You think there's an ethical obligation in journalism? This whole thing has been nothing but lies. Chink made one good point. Everything else has been a freaking lie.
love the idea that you will just constantly be lusting for blood, terrified, jealous, suspicious. That's what they want. They turn people into these crazed, bloodthirsty, terrified individuals, knowing that th that sort of population is never going to pose any sort of risk to the most powerful and wealthy people in this country. Well, that's Morgan. the exact dynamic we have here in Ohio. I mean, on the other side of this... <laughs> Republican Senate on the Republican side of the Senate race, J.D. Vance, Josh Mandel. I mean, these are people that are just stoking the fire of this hatred and violence and suspicion of people around you and using it for their own political gain. So, I mean, that's the stakes of things in Ohio. We have a lot of these same types of laws on the books, and it is it is a scary time and why, you know, the Senate race is so important. Thanks for yeah, you would say that, even though Chink just went on a rant about how white people are evil and right wingers are evil. And they want to go in and say that, look, the, the country is just going to be like people roaming around killing each other. That point was made in there somewhere. It's been a month since Kyle Rittenhouse verdict. Are people roaming around killing each other? Is there like, I think murders have gone up since then maybe, but it hasn't, I haven't seen anybody get killed in front of me. I haven't, you know, felt like I need to go out and like have weaponry with me to keep from getting hurt or to hurt somebody. So um, moving on. So my Kyle Rittenhouse story, how was I put into a situation similar to what Kyle Rittenhouse was put into? All right, so I'm like 13 or 14 years old. I don't remember exactly. And I'm hanging out with my friend, Terry, who was a year and a half younger than me. So he's like, he's either 12 or 13, right? He's a year younger than me at this point. And it's Illinois, it's summertime. We're, we're riding our bikes because that's what you do in Illinois in the summertime when you're kids. It gets hot, by the way, in case you're, you were wondering. Some people think it's like always cold. <laughs> I don't know why, but no, it gets hot in the summer. Uh, so about a half a block from his house, there's this, his neighbors there, and he doesn't like them. He tells me, yeah, I don't like those people, blah, blah, whatever. And we're going to ride past their house, and they're having a big party. So <laughs> he, we ride past the house, and he yells something like, you guys suck, or something. I don't know what it was, but something he yells at them. And the next thing you know, we got a kid following us on a bike. We're like, okay, what the heck is this, right? So this kid follows us for, I don't know, half a mile, something. And uh, he finally gets us to stop. And he's, he's older than us. He's, he's probably 15, 14 or 15, you know. But he stops us. <clears throat> and he starts, you know, having words with Terry. And I'm just standing there, like, sitting on my bike, you know, just like, okay, what's going on? I don't know. And he starts smacking Terry. <laughs> he's slapping him right in the face. And so here we are. We were, we were chased by an older person, right? And we were cornered and we stopped. And, and now we're being assaulted by this person, right? Just like Kyle Rittenhouse. Well, Terry and I, being little hoodlums like we were, we were just a little, we would get into mischief. We weren't, I wasn't bad. He, he is actually bad. He's actually ended up in prison. I don't know where he is now. I haven't talked to him in a long, long time. But, but he did end up in prison at least once, I think, I think twice, actually. But anyway, he reaches in and pulls out a knife, an actual, like, a nasty looking, like, it will gut you open knife. And the kid saw it coming. As soon as, as, soon as Terry started to, like, reach, he's like, oh, what, are you going to pull a knife on me? And he pulls out this knife. And. <laughs> What does Terry do? He, he holds the knife, you know, his arm is bent. He's got the knife pointed at the kid. And the kid keeps smacking him, just smacking him right in the face. Wham. And he doesn't do anything. Terry doesn't do anything. I'm sitting there thinking, why don't you just, like, you know, stick him? He's like, he's bigger than you. He's beating on you. Stick him. But, you know, see, I had been through a lot more violence than Terry had. Terry had never been in, he never really experienced any violence. Like, like I said many times on my channel, I had the crap beat on me a lot by my family. Not by my, by my family, but by other, other kids. I, I was the target. Anyway, it gets to the point, he, he like just keeps taking these, these smacks in the face, and he doesn't do anything about it. And finally, he's like staring at the kid, right? He's got the knife, and he says my last name. And he says, I could use your assistance here. And um, <laughs> I'm standing there. Now, this part, you're, gonna, you're not going to believe. This is, this is the crazy part. How am I going to get us out of this situation? And uh, this kid turns to me, and he's like, oh, what the F are you going to do, huh? All right, now, <laughs> you got to understand this. I made this glove. I had a glove. It was some sort of work glove that I, I had. And I, I turned it inside out. I taped off the, the fingertips with electrical tape. I turned it back around. And I my father had these, I don't know what they were, but they were these little copper-coated pieces of metal things that had a hook on them on one end. And I think there's some sort of staple that you hammer into something. But I basically bent them out a little bit, and I sharpened them up on his grinding stone. And I had little claws on the ends of each one of my fingers. I'm not joking. <laughs> I actually made this glove. I don't know what I did with it. I'm sure I'd thrown it away by now, but I, it wouldn't fit me today. Um, I'm not that much bigger than I was when I was that age, but I, I'm still bigger enough that I don't think it would fit me today. And they were retractable. I could uh, I could extend them and retract them. I could pull them back. So when they were, were retracted, they were a little bit longer than the, the uh, last knuckle on my finger. And so they would stick out a little bit, but then I could push them out and they would be, you know, an inch or two long, right? 
not, probably definitely not, not two inches because my, my last knuckle is not two inches long now. But anyway, I flicked my hand out and those <laughs> those blades came out and all crazy murder eyes raised that level by my face. <clears throat> and I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, at this point, this kid about craps his pants and he says, all right, uh, I'm, I'm going to let you off this time. But if you say anything to my family again, I'm going to come back and beat both your asses. And then he got on his bike and rode away. <laughs> so that is my crazy situation in my life where I was put into something similar to what Kyle Rittenhouse went through. I thought I would share that with you because I figured you'd all appreciate it. But um, good luck to you out there, Kyle, wherever you are. I hope everything works out for you. Thank you all for watching. I do appreciate everybody stopping by and supporting my work. Please remember to like, comment, and definitely share this video so that uh, more people come by my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.